Welcome to Sister to Sister. This is a good show. This is an important show. We're asking a question like this. What do, someone wrote, what do I do if my child seems gender confused? And I'm confused about something. Okay. Is it okay to spend money on luxuries or should we be giving all of our monies to God and to the needy? Ah, uh, mm -hmm. Stay tuned and find out. love our sister to sister music. I do. Yes. I really do. I and I'm that. really glad that you're with us. You have joined a panel of five opinionated women of God and we bring questions that you send to us from our hearts. We put it on the table and tell you what we think. So this fir well, first, I want to welcome Angela Madden today. Hi. Hello. Angela's sitting in for Flo today. We're so glad that you're with us. So glad to be here. This is going to be, there's a couple of tough questions in here. So <laughs> good luck is all I say. <laughs> okay. Oh, as a matter of fact, this one, I can't believe you wrote this. You did. You wrote, can your virginity be restored? Hmm. How do I deal with regret? Okay, since you're new. <laughs> you go. There you go. I there love you it. Go. <laughs> Welcome. <Welcome>. Question. <laughs> Well, I love the question because I think that it speaks to God's character. He's the God of restoration. True. He restores Amen. all things. Jeremiah 30 and 17, For I will restore thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, mm. saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is the Zion whom no man seeketh after. And I think a lot of times, all throughout the New Testament, we see Jesus, the number one thing he was doing was showing compassion to restore the person and to heal their body. And so I don't think this is any different from anything else that we need restoration from. And in that very place of restoration, not only does he restore our bodies and our minds and heal us from that, but he also lifts that weight of guilt and shame. And so how do you deal with regret? You take it to Jesus and you keep mm -hmm. focusing and centering on him until all you see is his love for you. See, I'm so glad that you're here and you, you bring a younger perspective two ways from your heart and also from your phone. <laughs> okay, so young people just on their phones, <laughs> me with the papers. <laughs> Thank you, Angela. I, I like it. Anybody else have anything about the virgin? Are you calling the rest, calling the rest of us old? Uh, no, you're young. You're young. She, you're, um, oh, she's calling me old. Yeah, I guess I am. We have our papers. I'm old and wise. I don't, papers, papers. I have don't gray, take my papers. I have gray hair, but it's all covered up. <laughs> so well, wisdom. How do you feel about this virginity yeah, I, thing? I look at John 8, how Jesus actually dealt with it. The woman caught in adultery. Mm -hmm. He not oh, only yes. forgave her, he protected her from yes. other mm. people accusing her. Mm -hmm. You're accusing yourself and she, he protected her from herself. Yes. Yes. Where are your accusers? Mm -hmm. She forgave herself. Yes. She did not stone okay. herself. And that's, that's what so we're good. doing yeah. when we think Jesus can't forgive us. Yes. It's unbelief. And what does he say? He protects her from the, those that stone. They all go. And he says, go and sin no more. How do we do it? Okay, you made a mistake. We all do. We're all sinners. Maybe in different places. I didn't make this mistake, but I made other mistakes. Mm -hmm. So... What do we do? We go and sin no more. We do our best to please our Lord. And if we don't fall back, Jesus, come to the rescue again. We repent. I love how you took the question and made it about all sin. That's yeah, so good. Right, right. But do you have something for yeah, the virginity? I mean, there's actually like a movement. I don't know. There's a term like some people have not may not have heard of it in Christianity called secondary virginity. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're technically, you know, never going to be a virgin <laughs> again. Right. I mean, that is something very special. And once you give that up, you're, you're never going to be a virgin again. But there's secondary virginity. And, you know, it's basically you're repenting of what you've done. And there's a real key part to this. And it's abstaining from sex, yeah. so okay? No and I think that's the part sometimes that some people might not realize. It's this part yeah. of 
secondary virginity is that you're repenting of it and then you're abstaining, okay? So if you want, if you really truly want to say like, okay, Lord, I realize I screwed up, I messed up, I, I want to, you know, put this before you, I am going to now abstain, okay? okay? So that's an important part of it. Well, I thought the most important part is repentance, for sure, for sure. But this next question is good, too. In a world of instant gratification, how do I teach my children to trust, have faith, and keep their joy while they're waiting on God to answer our prayer? So, so good. Roxanne, what do you have? Yeah, and you know, the thing about bringing joy to your life is not fulfilling it with outside things. The real key to joy is pleasing the Lord. So when we're trying to wait for instant gratification, we have to remember this. It's not so much about what pleases me, but what is pleasing God. Where is his stance on the gratification? Is it prayer? Is it praise? Is it worship? Is it a lifestyle? Or is it all these things that are around me that distract me? And the key word I use, don't be distracted. Yeah. To all young people, don't cause what's in front of you to be distracted. Hit the mark, the calling that God has called you to. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to stumble. That's fine. That's a part of learning. Mm -hmm. But hit the mark and don't be distracted from hitting the mark. Right. Well, Amy, what do we do when the, where they're waiting for an answer? Right, well, I mean, what do we do when I'm waiting for an <laughs> right, answer? Right, right, right. I mean, I'm in a culture of instant gratification. Yeah. I can be addicted to my phone. I mean, I feel like I'm right in this with them, yeah. but we're constantly talking to our children about two things, self-control and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. If you don't sacrifice today, you will not have tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you've got to wait on the Lord, you have to have self-control. Everything mm -hmm. shouldn't be given to you all at once just because you expect it or demand it. What we put the demand on is the promises of God for our life. And we know when we pray that he's heard us when we pray, mm -hmm. he hears us, right. he's going to answer us and we wait on his perfect timing. And there's a million stories to back up many scriptures on this, but those who wait on the Lord, Lord. will renew their strength. Yeah. They will rise up with wings like eagles. They will run and grow, you know, <laughs> you know. Isaiah. Oh, did you hear that? That's really good. <laughs> what do you have? Who has something for me? I literally said the same exact thing as Amy. I was like, they need to see it in our lives. Right, That's how right. our children are yeah, going to right, learn Lord. it is by Lord. seeing that we're not doing instant yeah. gratification <laughs> and not just in like, I mean, in everything, not just in praying about things. It's just like in everything, like we're not just going out and buying everything. We're saving up for things. It's just in everything. They need to see that example in our lives. And, you know, maybe we can't afford to like go out and buy something right now or we can't, like they like we need to tell the stories of the times yeah. where we prayed and prayed and yes. prayed for Good. something yes. or they need right. to see where we saved up and bought like yeah. that we need to share those stories of faith and times That's I prayed good. for my grandma to get saved for years and years every single day I prayed for her when I was a teenager and right before she died, she accepted Come the Lord on. as her savior. I need to share that story with right. my yeah. children yeah. so they can see that. I mean, we have those stories of faith in That's the word of, of God, mm -hmm. of all those, you know, the people of faith that, yeah. that have passed down to us. Right. We need to pass that down to our children. I love your personal story to your kids too. What do you have, Angela? I love that, sharing those stories and actually putting it in practice with your children in the little things. Mm -hmm. Like, don't give them, oh, they want the iPad right now. They don't have to have the iPad right now. Let's mm -hmm. put parameters around that and teach them when you wait for it. Let me see how you wait, baby. Are you gonna wait with joy? Are you gonna be excited and know that mommy is faithful and I, I fulfill my promises? Or are you gonna be anxious and keep asking, you know? <laughs> I think that really a lot ah, of times, like parenting, we have to put it in practice for them in the little places mm -hmm. so that when it comes to the big ones, those are easy. Well, I love what you said. You keep asking yeah. because sometimes with the Lord, I keep asking, <laughs> you know, perhaps I've asked the same prayer mm. many, many, many years, but yes. God knows my heart and it's his time, not mine. Okay. This last question is really good too. Yeah. This is the one that I talked about in the promo and you sent it to us. Mm. We appreciate this. What should I do if my child seems gender confused? Such yes. a hot topic for today. 
Amy, I'm giving it to you, Pastor yeah, Amy. No, no, I mean, this is just right in our face, you know, as we're celebrating Pride Month and we're seeing what's happening at Target and we're seeing all the companies pushing um, really a sexual preference agenda upon us, whether we want it or not. So I wanted to bring a book that I want to reference and it's called Engendered, What Was God Thinking by Patsy Caminetti. A, a phenomenal uh, Bible school teacher, you know, at my Bible school, very solid in the word. <clears throat> and she breaks it all down. So I just wanted to read a couple of lines from Is this, this a new book? that might help. Um, actually, it, book. it's like within the past five years. Okay, so, that's so it was new... written a bit ahead of like where we are right now. So like in the beginning, God separated the sexes. Let us make male and female. He separated the sexes, which is important. The sex chromosomes, you're either XX or XY. They're given at conception and how the baby develops before birth determines the sex identified when the baby is born. We know that. Apart from a person's spirit, there is nothing more core to his or her identity than his or her sex. Wow. wow. Th this is why it's under such huge violent attack because mm -hmm. Satan wants to attack our very identity and the core of who we are. The person's sex determined, determined by their DNA at the time of conception is stamped into every cell of their body and remains the same in spite of all modifications. And she's talking about in this gender dysphoria, gender identity, gender confusion, and what that looks like. And she said, there can be a variety of reasons why a person becomes disoriented regarding the sex he or she was conceived and born as. Many of them are intimate, some tragic, some a temporary phase. But she says it's when the body and the soul are at odds with each other, there is gender confusion. And Psalm 119, the entrance of God's word gives light. So if we see our children, <clears throat> what we go to is not what we think, not how we think it should be, not how we designed it to be, not what the world is telling them or what that book said, but we, got, we have to go to an absolute truth source and find out, well, how did God create you? And then we speak those words of value and God's word and God's light into that child. Um, we are all dealing with identity issues. That's right. And mm, we that's all true. have to hear what God says about it. And the entrance of his word will bring light and expose any darkness or hidden agendas of the enemy. I can't believe that book was written five years ago yeah. because the Bruce Jenner thing, was that five years ago? So this is relatively new. Anybody have something for us I, to talk to the people? Their child seems gender confused. I think one thing I important though is to say, um, there's, I, I mean, there's really nothing that you can't do as a boy or a girl except what's limited by biology. So, I, you know, I, I just want to, you know, say to my little boy or my little girl, like, you can do anything. You know what I mean? You're not limited by like what career you want to go into or what toy you want to play with or you know there's you know I think that there's you know they there's this this feeling like you know you're so limited by what gender you are and I don't the think role, there's the yeah writers. there's there's not you're not limited on your roles and I right. think that I think that we need to you know not limit them on their athletics or their toys or their the roles they want to play I don't think we have to say like okay my little girl you can't play with the Legos or you can't play with mm -hmm. like I think we need to let them play we can with be uh, nurses doctors yeah, presidents like, pastors that's come what on somebody like, like, I think we need to really make sure we're keeping those lines of communications open and really listen to our child and make sure we're not shutting them down if they are coming to us with gender confusion and that we're not being like super hyper like they're only going to ever wear pink or they're only ever going to wear blue and we're not going to let them play with because they're confused I'm going to be like super hyper to the you know one side or the other because we're so Extreme. scared right. about their confusion. I think that we need to really be careful but about I, that. I have a question. What do we tell our children who are seeing this yeah. every day? That's even different question. Yeah. What do we tell I mean, our children? What do you tell your kids, Angela? 
So I tell them the truth and I say, you know, it's really sad because a lot of times people just get confused in their mind. And we know confusion is not source in the Father right. who is peace. And when we trust in Him, His perfect peace comes in and guides and leads us into all goodness. And so um, with this in particular, I, I'm, I apologize for the mom or the father who is really struggling in this space. And I know it can be overwhelming and it can leave you distraught. And I just wanna let you know, first and foremost, there's always hope in Jesus that prayer, it by prayer, everything by prayer. And so he is our source and, and just to encourage you there. But um, I also think that it's really important, Amy hit on it in the book, is that identity as who we are in Christ Jesus through the word, let that right. word flow over them and into them that they may walk in the truth of whose they are first and foremost. When you walk in the truth, everything else is flooded. You know, um, one of the scriptures that I like, it says, for where envy and self-seeking exists, confusion and every evil thing are there. So when we focus on ourselves so much, it can get us completely off track and focusing on, oh, what's going on? I'm so confused in here. But when you focus on the word, it's set straight. Yeah, I have nothing to add to that. Thank you. Okay, we'll be right back. Stay there. Sorry. More questions coming up. <laughs> wow, just wow. The sisters are bringing it today. I'm so grateful for their hearts and I'm so grateful for you watching and sending us questions. And this question I'm giving to Amy because she's my bling girl. Well, you're, Corey's my bling girl too, but listen to this. Is it, you sent this? Is it wrong to spend money on luxuries such as designer clothes, a special nails, spas, <laughs> vacations, rather than giving it to God or the truly needy? Oh my gosh, Pastor Amy. Okay, before I say my opinions, the scripture is this, seek first mm -hmm. the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness, right. and then all these things are added unto you. Those things are not what we seek. I, I don't live yeah. for things. I don't yeah. live for stuff. That's not the center of my focus. Mm -hmm. That's not the center of my heart. That is not my purpose. However, I am a king's kid. And my king, my father, has streets of gold, gates of pearls. When I get there, he's going to give me crowns that I'm going to lay at his feet that are full of jewels. And he created everything in the earth for our enjoyment and our pleasure. And so I do believe that um, when your priority is first the kingdom and God blesses you, I think that he wants you to enjoy life as well. Some people enjoy it in different ways, right. whether it's right. exquisite trips or a designer belt or shoes. <laughs> I mean, when I walk in the shoe section, I feel the angels, it's like heaven and God's like, this is for you, Amy, you know? And with great wisdom, I shop for that amazing, perfect shoe. You know, it's, but that, I don't live for shoes. My focus isn't shoes. It's not what I'm dreaming of, yeah. thinking of. I'm thinking kingdom, building his kingdom. And I am a huge giver that I will say confidently. And you know what? I do enjoy nice things. Well, I've been in your closet. Shoes I wish that your shoes fit me. Because they don't. I wish they did. Oh, I will share. I I know, I like you that. talk about a giver. If I need something, you're I'll the first it. person that say, come over to closet Amy. Oh. So amazing. Amazing. You're and amazing. I've got a lot of jackets, which yes. you can you see. You do have a lot of jackets. I got them for sister Designer. to sister. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What do we think? Anybody else? Yeah, I'd like to say something about this. When I look at the scripture, there was the self-righteous rich young ruler. Uh, yes. Yes. And there was the perfect man. And then there was the yes. tax collector. Yes. So the, the perfect man comes, I've obeyed all the law. So how can I, what can I do? I love God and, and, and Jesus says, well, sell everything you have and follow me. He tested him right. in his self-righteousness. Yeah. He was self-righteous. Right. Jesus doesn't ask everybody to give everything up, but he said he was perfect. <laughs> but you lack one thing. You feel yourself righteous, mm -hmm. so 
you got to give up these things and follow me. He couldn't do it no. because he held on to them. Amy said, you seek rich. God's... Right. So then there's the tax collector in uh, Luke 19. He repented. He was rich. What did he do? He gave everything oh. back he stole wrong <laughs> right. four times over mm -hmm. and gave half of what he had. There's the self-righteous soul that Jesus demands from. And then there's the repentant soul. Mm -hmm. He didn't tell him, go give four times back. The man was repentant. It was his own conviction. I need to give everything back I stole when four mm -hmm. times over, and I'm going to give half of what I give to the poor. Yep. Oh my gosh. I, this question literally drives me crazy. I cannot stand this kind of question. It Even asking this question to me is like self-righteous, uh -oh. honestly. Uh -oh. It's like, it's like, ew, isn't it wrong to have luxuries? Isn't it wrong? Like, like people that like look at other people, people that look at other people and they're like, look at their house. Look, they just went on that vacation. Like, did you, like, look at what she's wearing. Look at her shoes. Look at my shoes. Oh my gosh. Everybody look at my shoes. Write a letter into Cornerstone Television. Well, bring your shoe up here. Like, I can't get my leg up there. Are you serious? Put the camera down there. I can I'll get my leg up here. I just, this drives me crazy. You know what? The Lord calls on us to give with a cheerful heart. He calls on us to do that because it's a personal issue. It's not on help your friend give with a cheerful heart, okay? It's a personal giving issue. Everything we have is the Lord's. Everything I own is the Lord's. I have nothing without the Lord, okay? And so I give back to the Lord with a cheerful heart because that's what I'm called to do and it's a blessing to do so, okay? And so there's always something more we could give. There's always yep. something. We could literally mm. have nothing. We could give it all back to him because he didn't ask for us to give it all back. He asked for a certain amount he for us to give, us to multiply it. give right. back right. and with a yeah, cheerful heart. Right. And that is what we are called to do. Okay, Miss Bling. Amen. Okay, but my Bling girl. You, but I need to drink. Okay, wait a we second. We need a drink I, here I on I aisle want five. To hear. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get some Bling on this? She got it up. Let's <laughs> bring <laughs> Bling on here. Hello, Blingy. <laughs> I want to I want to ask you about speaking the truth in love though because you are speaking the truth in love with oh, this blink. Just very there. much. So okay, loved. but think about Ephesians four. Four says that speak the truth in love. So how do you non-judge your rich people? Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, all go you ahead. rich people out there, I'm gonna speak some truth That's to right. you. Okay, go ahead. Um, don't judge. Here's the deal, that you don't sacrifice truth for love and you don't sacrifice love for truth. That is how you speak oh. the truth in love. Mm. You don't sacrifice one for the That's other. Good. That's Ooh. good. Anybody else? Because I'm not crazy about that, this one. <laughs> uh, only because oh, no, if somebody, not. okay, if someone I don't like their outfit and they ask me how's my outfit, I'm not speaking truth. Yeah. I'm you loving like, hey, them. Do you like this? You know, uh, <laughs> she's not. <laughs> Your nails. Okay, oh. somebody else speak the truth. Okay. What? what about like the characteristics of the Holy Spirit? Okay, that we should be yeah. operating in as we are speaking the truth yes. in love. That's and right. I just wrote a couple That's of right. things. He's honest, loving, loyal. He guides. He corrects. He's also your advocate. He's an instructor. He's a trusted friend. He's truthful, wise, peaceful, nurturing. So, yeah. like, is there a way we can approach speaking the truth in love with that sort of? Holy Spirit guidance. I don't know. We've had this question you know, before. I think one of the big things, like when Jesus goes into the temple, and that's always where everyone goes, well, Jesus got upset. He right. turned over tables. He was right. in. But if you continue to read that passage, it also says, and after these things, he healed in that same temple. If when you are sharing truth, the end goal is not healing and to lead them Amen. to Jesus truly and really with the love of Christ that says, I love you even when you remain in sin. If that is not your goal, then you're not doing it in love. Oh my gosh. Mm. And I, I really do love that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. And I know that some of you write to us and say, oh my gosh, Corey is showing her shoulders again. But that's, I do love this. I do love this. I love you so much. Okay. And I really love you. And we're going to wrap this show up because this is a heck of a show today. Stay there. We'll be right back.
Well, that was a crazy show today. You were in for a little bit of a wild ride there. We talked about a lot of great topics today. We talked about secondary virginity and instant gratification, gender confusion, uh, luxuries, and speaking the truth in love. And I am really grateful that my sisters speak the truth in love. Well, most of them at least. <laughs> and you know, we always end the show with a scripture. And today's scripture is in the Psalms. Psalm 25 verse five, this is a Psalm of David. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Is your hope in your Savior all day long? Or is it only in your hope when you're singing those worship songs on Sunday morning? Or maybe only when your keys are lost? Or when you're just praying that prayer over and over? If you want your hope to be in your Savior all day long, dig into those scriptures and you will see that hope over and over as it is repeated in God's word and you will find the hope of Jesus. Now, isn't that the truth that you will find the hope of Jesus in the scripture? So we always encourage you to check it out and check this one out too. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman or these sisters sharpen the other. And then I always add this and it's so true. They make me a better Kathy. See you next time. <laughs>